Hello everyone, and welcome to Pros Before Joes. This episode we'll be covering the Firebug perk for Killing Floor. We'll be going over the weapons, stats, and general hints and tips that you can use while playing as a Firebug. Let's go over the stats of the Firebug. All Firebugs will get a damage increase and discount for fire weapons, as well as damage resistance to fire weapons. Starting at level 1, they get a reload speed bonus and fuel capacity bonus for the flamethrower, and a reload speed bonus and magazine size increase for the Mac 10. Starting at level 3, they get a bonus to range for the flamethrower, and they start spawning with flame grenades. At level 5, they spawn with a flamethrower, and at level 6, they spawn with a flamethrower as well as combat armor. Let's start off with the original firebug weapon, the flamethrower. The flamethrower has a short to medium range and is very effective at taking out large groups of weak to medium sized specimens. It also has very cheap ammo and is very inexpensive to buy as well. Most of the damage from the flamethrower results from the burn damage that is caused because it has very little impact damage. As a result, you probably shouldn't focus on the larger specimens like Scrakes and Flesh Pounds because you'll be using up a lot of ammo to take them down. All of the damage done by the flamethrower is body damage, it does not cause any headshot damage. It also has a fairly high recoil and fairly low ammo reserve, so it is recommended that you fire in burst instead of a long stream. Let's move on to the Mac 10 This gun is a lightweight long-range weapon that is useful as a backup most of the time for a firebug. The gun can be switched from semi and fully automatic. At full auto, however, it does have a fairly high recoil, so it really is only recommended to use it if you're cornered by a large specimen, for instance. Otherwise, you should keep it on semi-automatic because each bullet is able to ignite the specimen. This is useful for the kite and burn technique where you shoot a specimen and have him burn out and just keep moving. And you can keep shooting him again if he doesn't die. Most specimens, however, will be killed by just one shot and burnout, especially on the lower levels. Another lightweight weapon that the firebugs can use is the flare revolver. Compared to the Mac 10, it does do more damage per shot, but it has a smaller rate of fire. At long range, it's also not as effective because the flares travel fairly slowly, so it's difficult to lead targets at long range. You can purchase dual flare revolvers as well. This will give you an increase to your rate of fire as well as your clip size at the expense of the reload rate and your overall accuracy because aiming down the sights is much more difficult. Unlike the Mac 10, it does do fire damage off perk, so it is useful as an off perk weapon should you choose to use it. It's also interesting to note that the flares will actually illuminate dark areas, so it could be useful if you're in a dark area as well. One final thing to mention is that this is part of the Community Weapons DLC pack, so you will need to have purchased that if you want to buy the weapons in-game. The next gun in the arsenal is the Trench Gun. This gun will fire Dragon's Breath shells, which will allow the projectiles to light targets on fire. It has a moderate range for a shotgun, and is fairly powerful in comparison to the rest of the Firebug's weapons. As a result, it is slightly more effective at taking out the larger specimens. However, the low rate of fire and low magazine size makes it less effective to take them out at higher difficulty levels. If you're not firing the gun, you should be reloading it since the reload animation is interruptible, just like similar shotguns in the Support Specialist perk. Speaking of the Support Specialist, it does benefit from the Support Specialist perk if it is used by one. It's also important to note that off perk, the trench gun will still fire the flaming projectiles, so it is useful in that regard as well. The final gun in the firebug arsenal is the husk fireball launcher. This gun has the ability to charge its shots, so the damage and blast radius will increase depending on how long you charge the shot. This gun will probably be your most effective gun at taking out larger specimens as a firebug, because a fully charged shot can do a ton of damage. It's important to keep in mind, however, that to fully charge a shot, it does take three seconds. 
However, it is more effective to use this gun against large groups of enemies because of the blast radius that it creates. It's important to note that the gun never requires reloading. However, the gun will take in between 1 to 10 units of fire away from your overall ammo pool depending on how long you charged it up. One big downside of the gun is it is tied for fourth as the most expensive weapon in the game. The flame grenades that you get with the perk are useful for taking out large groups of enemies. It's also useful if you get surrounded by enemies to throw one at your feet because your flame resistance will protect you from the damage. I don't usually play as the firebug, it is my least favorite class. However, when I do play, I usually prefer the trench gun and the flare revolvers because I like the damage output that they have. As a firebug, your main concern will be crowd control. It is a versatile class, however, you can do a hunker down approach or you can do the kite and burn technique as I mentioned earlier. It's better to coordinate with your team by taking out the smaller specimens while leaving the larger ones to those who are more effective at taking them out. It's also important to note that your flames are pretty obscuring visually, so if you have, for instance, a sharpshooter on your team, try to limit your fire when he needs to take a shot and he will be much more appreciative of that. There are a couple enemies to take note depending on your loadout. For husks, they have a fire resistance, so a higher impact weapons such as the flare revolver or the MAC-10 will be more effective at taking them out. For sirens, keep in mind that they will pop your flares as well as the husk shots. An effective tactic when fighting the Patriarch is to set him on fire when he cloaks to run and heal. That way you'll give yourself as well as your teammates that few seconds needed to see where he's going, and that can make all the difference. That'll wrap up this video then. I hope that you found the tips and hints useful, and I will see you next time on Pros Before Joes.